The electrical circuit testing you are about to see reflects club car electric vehicles with serial numbers ranging from A9501-4171 to date. Club Car Incorporated reserves the right to change specifications and designs at any time without notice and without incurring any obligation or liability whatsoever. Warning, only trained technicians should repair or service this vehicle. Anyone doing even simple repairs or service should have some knowledge and experience in general electrical repair. Follow all procedures exactly and heed all warnings stated in this manual. Always wear safety glasses or approved eye protection while servicing vehicle. Wear a full face shield when working with batteries. Turn key switch off, place forward and reverse lever in the neutral position and remove key prior to servicing. Do not wear loose clothing. Remove jewelry such as rings, watches, chains, etc. before servicing vehicle. Always use insulated tools when working near batteries or electrical connections. To avoid unintentional starting of the vehicle, disconnect batteries as shown in figure 17-1 and then discharge the controller as follows. Turn the key switch to on and place the forward and reverse lever in the reverse position. Slowly depress the accelerator pedal and keep it depressed until the reverse warning buzzer can no longer be heard. When the buzzer stops sounding, the controller is discharged. Danger! Batteries release explosive gases. Keep all sources of ignition, cigarettes, sparks, flames, away from charging and service areas. Charging and service areas should be well ventilated to prevent buildup of explosive gases. Use extreme caution when using tools, wires, or metal objects near batteries. A short circuit and or spark could cause an explosion. Batteries contain acid that is poisonous and can cause severe burns. Battery acid antidotes, external, flush with water, Call physician immediately. Internal. Drink large quantities of water or milk. Follow with milk of magnesia or vegetable oil. Call physician immediately. Eyes. Flush with water for 15 minutes. Call physician immediately. Test procedure one. Batteries voltage check. When making electrical tests or repairs, Always wear safety glasses or approved eye protection. Remove the switch key, put the forward and reverse switch in neutral, and disconnect the batteries as shown at battery number one positive terminal and battery number six negative terminal. Refer to figure 17-1 on page 17-2 in your maintenance and service manual and follow all procedures exactly as stated. With your VOM set at DC volts, place the red positive probe on the positive terminal of battery number one and the black negative probe on the negative terminal of battery number six. Your VOM should display at least 48 volts. If you don't read at least 48 volts with the batteries fully charged, check for loose battery connections or a battery installed in reverse polarity. Test Procedure 2. Key Switch. If the vehicle being tested is equipped with a multi-step wiper switch potentiometer, place the red positive probe of your VOM set at ohms resistance on the large post of the solenoid with a red wire attached. Place the black negative probe on the blue wire disconnect terminal on the key switch side of the wire assembly. With the key switch off, your VOM should display no continuity. Insert the key and turn the switch on. Your VOM should display continuity. If the readings are incorrect, 
check the key switch, wires and terminals and replace any defective parts. If the vehicle being tested is equipped with the continuously variable potentiometer, place the red positive probe of your VOM set at ohms resistance on the large post of the solenoid with a red wire attached. Place the black negative probe on the green and white wire terminal from limit switch number one located on the forward and reverse switch. Depress and hold the accelerator pedal to the floor to activate the accelerator pedal limit switch. With the key switch off your VOM should display no continuity. Insert the key and turn the switch on while continuing to hold down the accelerator pedal. Your VOM should display continuity. If the readings are incorrect, check the key switch, limit switch, wires and terminals and replace any defective parts. Test Procedure 3 Forward and Reverse Anti-Arcing Limit Switch Of the three limit switches on the forward and reverse switch, the forward and reverse anti-arcing limit switch is the first switch in the group closest to the vehicle body. With your VOM set at Ohm's resistance, place the red positive probe on the small solenoid post that has the white and black and red wires attached to it. Place the black negative probe on the anti-arcing limit switch, normally open terminal. Your VOM should display continuity when the forward and reverse handle is placed in either the forward or reverse position. Your VOM should not display continuity when the forward and reverse handle is in the neutral position. If the readings are incorrect, check wires and terminals and replace switch if defective. Warning. When making electrical tests or repairs, always wear safety glasses or approved eye protection. Remove key. Put F and R switch in neutral. Disconnect batteries as shown, figure 17-1, page 17-2. Follow all procedures exactly as stated. See safety warnings, page 17-1. Test procedure four, accelerator pedal limit switch. If the vehicle being tested is equipped with a multi-step wiper switch potentiometer, Place the black negative probe of your VOM set at ohms resistance on the green and white wire terminal from the limit switch number one located on the forward and reverse switch. Place the red positive probe on the wiper switch side of the blue wire disconnect terminal. With the accelerator pedal all the way up, your VOM should display no continuity. Depress the accelerator pedal completely to the floor. Your VOM should display continuity. If the readings are incorrect, check to be certain the wires are connected properly to the normally closed and the common terminals on the limit switch. Also, check the accelerator pedal adjustment. See section 21 in your maintenance and service manual. If the wires are connected properly to the limit switch and the accelerator pedal properly adjusted, but the VOM readings are incorrect, replace the limit switch. If the vehicle being tested is equipped with a continuously variable potentiometer, turn the key switch on and place the red positive probe of your VOM on the large post of the solenoid with a red wire attached. Place the black negative probe on the green and white wire terminal from limit switch number one, located on the forward and reverse switch. With the accelerator pedal all the way up, your VOM should display no continuity. Depress the accelerator pedal completely to the floor. Your VOM should display continuity. If these readings are incorrect, 
check to be certain the wires are connected properly to the limit switch and the accelerator pedal properly adjusted. If the VOM readings are incorrect, replace the limit switch. Test Procedure 5 Solenoid Activating Coil To check the diode assembly, remove the diode assembly and yellow wire from the rearward small post on the solenoid. With your VOM set to ohms resistance, place the red positive probe of your VOM on the red insulated terminal end of the diode assembly. Place the black negative probe on the uninsulated terminal end of the diode assembly. Your VOM should display no continuity. Place the red positive probe of the VOM on the uninsulated terminal end of the diode assembly. Place the black negative probe on the red insulated terminal end of the diode assembly. Your VOM should display continuity. If a diode shows continuity in both directions or does not show continuity in either direction, replace the diode assembly. Note that the diode assembly must be installed with the red insulated terminal end attached to the forward small solenoid post with the white and black and red wires. To check the activating coil in the solenoid, Remove the diode assembly and yellow wire from the rearward small post on the solenoid. Place the red positive probe of the VOM on the rearward small post on the solenoid and the black negative probe on the forward small post. Your VOM should display an ohms resistance reading of 190 to 250. If the reading is incorrect or the circuit is open, Replace the solenoid. Test Procedure 6 Forward Reverse Switch With your VOM set at ohms resistance and the forward and reverse handle in the forward position, place the red positive probe on the M minus terminal of the speed controller. Place the black negative probe on the S1 motor terminal. Your VOM should display continuity. With the forward and reverse handle in the forward position, place the red positive probe on the A2 motor terminal. Place the black negative probe on the S2 motor terminal. Your VOM should display continuity. Place the forward and reverse handle in the reverse position. Place the red positive probe on the speed controller M minus terminal. Place the black negative probe on the S2 motor terminal. Your VOM should display continuity. With the forward and reverse handle in the reverse position, place the red positive probe on the A2 motor terminal. Place the black negative probe on the S1 motor terminal. Your VOM should display continuity. If continuity readings cannot be obtained in any one or in all of the checks and the wires and connections are correct, the forward and reverse switch will require repair or replacement. Warning. When making electrical tests or repairs, always wear safety glasses or approved eye protection. Remove key. Put F and R switch in neutral. Disconnect batteries as shown, figure 17-1, page 17-2. Follow all procedures exactly as stated. See safety warnings, page 17-1. Test Procedure 7, Solenoid Contacts, Power Off. Remove the yellow and red wires and resistor assembly from the two large posts on the solenoid.
With your VOM set at ohms resistance, place the red and black probes on each of the two large posts on the solenoid. Your VOM should display no continuity. If the VOM shows continuity, replace the solenoid. Place the red and black probes on each end of the resistor assembly terminals. Your VOM should display approximately 250 ohms resistance. If the reading is incorrect, replace the resistor assembly. Test Procedure 8 Multi-Step Potentiometer If the vehicle being tested is equipped with a multi-step wiper switch potentiometer, disconnect the black and white number 18 wires that are attached to the speed controller terminals 2 and 3, terminals B and C on early model vehicles. Place the red and black probes into the terminal ends of the wires. Disconnect the half-speed reverse resistor from the half-speed reverse limit switch. With your VOM set at ohms resistance, measure the value of the resistors in the V-glide switch assembly as you depress the accelerator pedal. The measured resistance should go up in six steps. First step, approximately 300 ohms. Second step, approximately 690 ohms. Third step, approximately 990 ohms. Fourth step, approximately 1740 ohms. Fifth step, approximately 2740 ohms. Sixth step, approximately 4940 ohms. With the accelerator pedal fully depressed to the floor, your VOM must display at least 4,600 ohms, but must not exceed 7,000 ohms in order for the potentiometer to be in proper operating condition. If the resistance steps are not correct and the accelerator pedal is properly adjusted, replace the multi-step potentiometer. Test Procedure 9 continuously variable potentiometer. Disconnect the three-wire connector that connects the potentiometer to the forward and reverse wire harness. The connector emerges from under the floorboard into the battery compartment below the charger receptacle. Connect the calibration and test module, club car part number 101 887 1-01 to the potentiometer wire harness connector. Connect the green wire to the green and white wire from the forward and reverse anti-arcing limit switch. Connect the blue wire to the large post on the solenoid with the red wire. Turn the calibration and test module on and set the switch at the lower right-hand side to the pot position. Insert the key into the switch and turn to the on position. Depress the accelerator pedal just to the point where the accelerator pedal limit switch is activated. The red LED light on the front of the test module will illuminate to indicate this. The voltage reading displayed should be greater than three volts. If the voltage is below three volts, the potentiometer must be adjusted. Depress the accelerator pedal fully. The voltage reading displayed should be less than one volt. If the voltage is greater than one volt, the potentiometer must be adjusted. Danger. Turn key switch to off, put the F and R switch in neutral, and disconnect the battery cables as shown in figure 17-1, page 17-2. Failure to do this may cause the vehicle to run over you, resulting in severe injury or death. Warning. 
To avoid electrical shock, discharge the controller as follows. Turn the key switch to on and place the forward reverse lever in the reverse position. Slowly depress the accelerator pedal and keep it depressed until the reverse warning buzzer can no longer be heard. When the buzzer stops sounding, the controller is discharged. Turn the key switch to off and place the forward reverse lever in the neutral position. When making electrical tests or repairs, always wear approved eye protection or safety glasses. Follow all procedures exactly as stated. Note. Prior to attempting the following tests, the rear of the vehicle must be raised and secured on jack stands with the drive wheels off the ground. Warning, lift only one end of unloaded vehicle at a time. Chalk the wheels and lock brakes prior to lifting. Use a suitable lifting device, chain hoist or hydraulic floor jack with 454 kilograms, 1,000 pounds, minimum lifting capacity. Do not use lifting device to hold vehicle in raised position. Always use approved jack stands of proper weight capacity to support vehicle. Test procedure 10. Solid state speed controller. Check to make certain the electrical connections on the controller, motor, and batteries are tight. When checking the controller bus bar connections for tightness, be sure to use the double wrench technique to avoid stressing and cracking the bus bars and seals. Inspect the terminal area for any corrosion or accumulations of dirt, acids, fertilizers, etc. Remove any trace of foreign material from the terminal face of the controller. To test the controller for solenoid input, remove the number six white wire from the A2 motor terminal and secure it. Reconnect the wires to batteries number one positive terminal and six negative terminal. Place the red positive probe of your VOM set at DC volts on the forward small post of the solenoid with the white and black and red wires and the black negative probe on the rearward small post of the solenoid. Place the forward and reverse handle in either forward or reverse. Insert the key into the switch and turn to the on position. Depress the accelerator pedal fully to the floor. Your VOM should display full battery voltage. To test the controller for input voltage, place the black negative probe of your VOM on the B- minus terminal of the controller. Remove the number 18 red wire from the controller terminal 1, terminal A on early model controllers, and place the red positive probe into the red wire terminal. Place the forward and reverse handle in either forward or reverse. Insert the key into the switch and turn to the on position. Depress the accelerator pedal fully to the floor. Your VOM should display full battery voltage. Disconnect battery wires. Reconnect the white number six wire to the A2 motor terminal and reconnect the wires to batteries number one positive terminal and number six negative terminal. To test the controller for voltage output, remove the number six white wire from the A2 motor terminal and secure. Place the red positive probe of your VOM on the B plus terminal of the controller. Place the black negative probe on the M minus terminal of the controller. Your VOM will display controller capacitor voltage. Place the forward and reverse switch in forward. Insert the key into the switch and turn to the on position. Depress the accelerator pedal fully to the floor. 
your VOM should display full battery voltage. If the VOM does not rise to full battery voltage with a properly functioning potentiometer and correct pedal adjustment, the controller is defective and must be replaced. To test the controller on early multi-step V-Glide potentiometer vehicles for diode output, remove the wires from batteries one positive terminal and six negative terminal. Discharge the controller. Turn off the key switch and place the forward and reverse handle in the neutral position. Remove the wires from the controller terminals A2 and B+. Place the red positive probe of your VOM set to ohms resistance on the B plus terminal of the controller and the black negative probe on the A2 terminal of the controller. Your VOM will display a higher ohms resistance reading in this position than when you reverse the locations of the probes. If your VOM has a diode test function, use that test. With your VOM set at diode test, place the red positive probe of your VOM on the A2 terminal of the controller and the black negative probe on the B plus terminal of the controller. Your VOM should display continuity. Reverse the positions of the VOM probes. Your VOM should display no continuity. If you find the diode to be shorted, the controller is defective and must be replaced. Test Procedure 11 Onboard Computer Lockout Circuit Inspect the charger receptacle for water in the contacts. If water is found, proceed as follows. Disconnect the battery wiring at battery number one positive terminal and battery number six negative terminal. Discharge the speed controller. Remove the charger receptacle from the car. Dry the charger receptacle by wiping it with a clean dry cloth and by blowing into the contacts with compressed air. Inspect the butyl sealant that seals the entrance of the gray sense lead into the charger receptacle. Reinstall the charger receptacle and wiring. It is possible that the onboard computer can become locked up, causing an onboard computer solenoid lockout circuit to malfunction. This will disable the vehicle. If this condition is suspected, reboot the computer as follows. Disconnect the battery wiring at battery number one positive terminal and battery number six negative terminal. Discharge the speed controller. Reconnect the battery wires attempt to drive the vehicle. If the problem has been corrected by rebooting the computer, the vehicle will function normally. If it is determined that computer lockup is not the problem, it will be necessary to bypass the onboard computer solenoid lockout circuit in order to isolate the problem. Proceed as follows. Disconnect the battery wiring at battery number one positive terminal and battery number six negative terminal. Discharge the speed controller. Connect a jumper wire to the rearward small solenoid post with a yellow wire and the negative terminal of battery number six. Reconnect the battery wires. If the vehicle can be driven with a jumper wire attached, then the onboard computer has failed and must be replaced. If the vehicle cannot be driven with the jumper wire attached, Study the troubleshooting guide on pages 17-6 through 17-9 to find and check the other circuits that could cause the same symptoms. Test Procedure 12 Half-Speed Reverse Limit Switch Check the limit switch for proper wiring and tight connections. 
with your VOM set at ohms resistance, attach the black negative probe to the limit switch common terminal. Place the red positive probe on the normally closed terminal with the limit switch lever up. Your VOM should display continuity. Place the red positive probe on the normally open terminal with the limit switch lever up. Your VOM should display no continuity. Place the red positive probe on the normally closed terminal with the limit switch lever depressed. Your VOM should display no continuity. Place the red positive probe on the normally open terminal with the limit switch lever depressed. Your VOM should display continuity. If the VOM readings are not correct, replace the limit switch. Test procedure 13. Half speed reverse resistor. If the vehicle being tested is equipped with a multi-step wiper switch potentiometer, disconnect the number 18 black wire from the reverse limit switch and disconnect the number 18 black wire from the speed controller where it plugs into the blue disconnect terminal in the potentiometer to limit switch circuit. With your VOM set at ohms resistance, measure the resistance through the number 18 black wire and resistor assembly from the limit switch terminal end to the blue disconnect terminal by placing the red and black probes at each end. Your VOM should display 3,900 ohms, plus or minus 10%. If the VOM reading is incorrect, Replace the wire assembly with the resistor to the limit switch. If the vehicle being tested is equipped with the continuously variable potentiometer, disconnect the black number 18 wire from the reverse limit switch and disconnect the three wire connector from the potentiometer. With your VOM set at ohms resistance, Measure the resistance through the number 18 black wire and resistor assembly from the limit switch terminal end to the end disconnected from the three wire plug by placing the red and black probes at each end. Your VOM should display 5,100 ohms, plus or minus 10%. If the VOM reading is incorrect, Replace the wire harness assembly with the resistor to the limit switch. Test procedure 14. Electrical circuit fuses. There are four fuses located in the power drive system 48 electrical system that protect the onboard computer. The first is the sense lead fuse located in the gray wire running from the charger receptacle to the computer. After removing the fuse assembly by unplugging both ends from the gray wire, place the red and black probes of your VOM set at ohms resistance into the terminal ends of the fuse assembly. Your VOM should display continuity. If there is no continuity reading, the fuse is blown. A blown sense lead fuse is an indication of a defective DC cord in the battery charger. The DC cord must be replaced before a new fuse is installed. The next fuse is located in the onboard computer wire harness. Separate the plastic conduit that covers the wire harness and carefully pull out the red wire assembly. This is the power lead to the onboard computer. The fuse is covered by the black heat shrink tubing. To test the fuse, attach the wire end of your continuity tester to the red power lead wire, where it attaches to the large post on the solenoid. Pierce the insulation of the red wire assembly between the fuse and onboard computer with your continuity tester probe. Your tester should display a light showing continuity. If there is no light displayed, the fuse is blown and must be replaced by cutting out the fused section of the wire assembly 
and replacing it with a new fuse assembly. If the new fuse blows, the onboard computer has an internal defect and must be replaced. Located in the same areas as the red wire fuse assembly, there is also a yellow wire assembly with a fuse that is part of the solenoid lockout circuit. To test the fuse, attach the wire end of your continuity tester to the yellow wire terminal where it attaches to the rearward small solenoid post. Pierce the insulation of the yellow wire assembly between the fuse and onboard computer with your continuity tester probe. Your tester should display a light showing continuity. If there is no light displayed, the fuse is blown and must be replaced by cutting out the fused section of the wire assembly and replacing it with a new fuse assembly. The last fuse is located in the onboard computer wire harness just behind the speed controller. The brown wire protruding from the plastic conduit is attached by a fuse assembly to a brown wire going into the main wire harness. This circuit operates the dash mounted battery warning light. To test the fuse, remove it from the harness by unplugging both ends from the brown wires. Place the red and black probes of your VOM set at ohms resistance into the terminal ends of the fuse assembly. Your VOM should display continuity. If there is no continuity reading, the fuse is blown and must be replaced.